welcome. There's an old story from India about a god called Brahma. And Brahma's sitting up in the universe and nothing exists, so he's bored. So he creates a goddess named Maya, simply for the purpose of having fun. So Brahma's standing there with Maya and he says, hey, let's play some games. And Maya says, well, first, why don't you make me a world? So Brahma makes the world in which we live. So then he comes up to Maya and he says, okay, it's time to play our game. And Maya says, ooh, just a minute. We need some life on this world. So Brahma goes and he makes the plants and the animals and the organisms. He brings life to the world. And he comes back to Maya and he says, okay, it's time to play our game. And she says, just one more little thing. Make a creature for this world that is intelligent enough to understand what you have created. So Brahma creates human beings. So now he goes back to Maya, he says, Maya, I have done everything you asked. It has got to be time to play this game, right? And she says, it sure is. So then she cuts him up into a million little pieces and she puts one piece inside every human. And she says, the game has begun. It's time to find yourself. Now this story is a powerful and memorable story that illustrates a concept that is very real, that is widely studied, and that is proven across a lot of different formats. And that is the theory of human interconnectivity. And at its baseline, what it means is when I feel something, you feel something. And when you feel something, I feel something. And this is not a romantic concept, this simply is. There are so many studies Across the religious sector, there are concepts that speak to human interconnectivity. Across psychological research, across organizational research, we know inherently that when a crisis occurs, everyone in that community feels something and is impacted. We know that there are mirror neurons in the brain that physically have us feel something when someone else is feeling something. We are interconnected. So why does this matter to us as commercial real estate professionals? Why does it matter that we're interconnected? It matters because we are interconnected and we are facing a problem together, a major problem in the workforce. And I call this a tale of two rooms. So if you would imagine with me a beautiful office building, and we will go over here to what we'll call room number one. And in room number one, we call this the finance room. This is where all the Excel spreadsheets live. This is the room that represents all of the people who are protecting profitability in companies, employers, investors, etc. So these guys are working really hard to drive American business forward. They want success. And now, just down the hall, doo -doo -doo -doo, we have another room. Envision this room over here with me. This room is filled with our workforce. This is the room of people. We are idea generators. We are putting our shoulder to the wheel. We are doing the work, getting things done. And we're also doing that because we want success. We want success in our companies. We want success in our lives. We want a great quality of life. So we have our finance room. We have our workforce room. We both want the same things, right? So obviously, we're best friends, <laughs> clearly. But I think we all know that that is not true today. I think we all know that the finance room and the workforce room are a little more like this. <laughs> yeah. There is a great divide between these two rooms. And I wanna be clear here, the great divide is a phrase that is being used in American politics. I'm not talking about politics today. I am talking about American business. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I firmly believe that business is the backbone of the American economy and that we must protect our interdependent business systems if we want to live the kinds of life that we know we can as Americans. So let's look into that a little bit. Because we are interconnected, the reason that this is affecting us so much is that our divide, our anger between each other is creating suffering that we don't even realize it's coming from. This all comes back to interconnectivity. So within the workforce right now, one in four people in our industry are suffering mental health problems. That's in real estate. And then beyond that, the CEO of Airbnb just two months ago said that right now is the loneliest time in human history. We have 76% of the workforce that is suffering from anxiety and depression. 
We are impacted by these problems, and that is because we are interconnected. See, to me, what I see is that there's a very simple problem here. The problem is a communication problem. And that's where my expertise is. I'm a communicator. That's the only thing I know how to do, right? But these two rooms are not communicating well. So what can we, as commercial real estate professionals, do to help bridge this gap and help repair our human interconnectivity? Well, I've got three strategies for you today. So number one, become a two-way communicator. And what I mean by that is really find out what's really happening in both of those rooms. When you go to study communications, the very first thing you will learn is the theory of two-way communication. There is no communication unless there are two sides, a sender and a receiver. And so for us, we have to practice seeing both sides. We have to practice understanding what is in both rooms. So let's do that right now with our workforce. So there is a perception that has permeated society. It's talked about in the media, it's talked about at the water cooler. There is a perception that today's American workforce doesn't wanna work. People are saying that this workforce is lazy. People are saying that they are entitled. And they're saying that they're disengaged. This is one way to look at it. But I propose that if you look at it only through this one side, through this one lens, it's a flawed way of thinking. I propose that there is another reality that we can examine. Number one, today's workforce is the most purpose-driven workforce in history. I've cited a study here by Deloitte, but there are so many others. People changed jobs en masse because they were following their hearts. People in this generation no longer want to do work that's not aligned with their passion. They want to be ethically and morally aligned with the companies they serve. That is an opportunity. That is people who are truly ready to deliver something beautiful to the workforce. The next thing, job satisfaction in the US is actually at its highest since the 1980s. Now, this one honestly surprised me. When I was doing my research for this speech, I was looking up articles and I saw this one that said, um, all of your employees hate their job and they all wanna quit. And I was like, well, that has to be recent. It was 11 years ago. This is not a new thing. We just think it is because of the rhetoric that we've been fed on one side. So in truth, Job satisfaction is actually much higher than it has been. And perhaps it is because there were these changes and people have been following their heart and pursuing their passion. So from my perspective, I call today's workforce, Workforce 2.0. I believe that this workforce is seeking inspiration. And that is an opportunity for those people in that finance room. That's an opportunity for people to embrace and to grow. Now let's look at our finance room. So there's a perception among our finance room, and remember, these are the people who are protecting the bottom line. These are our people driving profits. There is a perception that these people are evil, right? How many people have said, my landlord is evil, <laughs> right? Um, I usually say to that, do you want to live in a building that's managed by the DMV? <laughs> but, but we do. We tend to think that this room is evil. We also think they're greedy, right? We also think that they are separate we forget that we are interconnected with the people in that room. And beyond that, we frankly think they don't care. But what's the other lens? What else could we look at within this room to better understand it? Again, it's a flawed way of thinking to only do one. On the other side, the responsibility of the people in that finance room to raise profits directly affects your success and mine. So again, we're back to interdependence, interconnectivity. Beyond that, the people in that room are ethically and morally and legally obligated to actually grow their investments. Let's look at that in a story form to better understand it. So we're gonna start right here in our workforce room with Sally. And Sally is a teacher. And Sally's been working for almost 20 years as a teacher. And Sally regularly receives a paycheck and a portion of that paycheck is automatically placed into a fund. And the purpose of that fund is to grow. It has to grow, right? Because Sally has been working for 20 years, she would like to end her career and enjoy her time with her family and be taken care of. She would like to have that, and this is how the system works. Well, who is in charge of growing that fund for Sally? 
Meet Margot in the finance room. Margot's job is to grow profits for this investment. That's her whole job. And if she doesn't, then Sally is left with nothing. And see, Margot has a really tough job. And honestly, this is something I didn't even understand until I got into commercial real estate. Margot doesn't have to just grow the investment. She has to grow it enough to outpace inflation. And we all know what inflation feels like. I live in Southern California. My hamburger costs $28. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So this is a big job, but you can see how interdependent this is. We have to have Sally doing her work diligently, contributing to this fund, and we have to have Margot protecting that fund and growing that fund. This is interconnectivity among those rooms. And then I wanna remind you, there's a whole bunch of Sallys. We're not talking about one Sally. We're talking about Sally and Dave and Philip and Joe. We're talking about police officers and firefighters and all sorts of people. Our entire American workforce is interconnected with that finance room. Strategy number two, I suggest that we all need to think, and this is on both rooms, both rooms need to focus on building mountains and not flagpoles. And see, some of this, now that we understand what's happening in both rooms, we understand that we have to grow, some of this is coming from a societal pressure right? As a society, we grow into cultural norms. And I'd like to look at this through the lens of what we call the American dream today. So up here, this is what I would call the old American dream, right? Nuclear family, white picket fence. This is what I grew up seeing as the American dream. And see, I think we've made really positive strides. I think that we see an American dream today that is less cookie cutter, it is less closed-minded, it is more open. I think there's a lot of really good things that have come to adjust the American dream. But I also think that there's something very dangerous. I think that there's a mindset that has infiltrated the American dream that is driving us to try to push up, up, up always. This is my take on the new American dream. The new American dream is luxury at all cost. It's fly higher and higher and higher. Don't tolerate stability. It's also a focus on us, on what are we presenting to the world. This to me is a flagpole. A flagpole exists to stand up by itself, to draw attention and to say, I am here. But see, a mountain actually embraces the community that it's in. A mountain can do a lot more than a flagpole can. So to me, this is about inner communication. This is about how we as commercial real estate professionals and communicators speak to ourselves. So let's look at that. Inner messages that build flagpoles. If you wanna build a flagpole, you will say to yourself, go as high as you can, always higher, go, go, go. If you wanna build a mountain, you'll say, grow out while growing up. How can you reinvest? How can you make sure that the entire community, that everything that touches your organization, your career, your family, your community is pulled in together? That's building a mountain. Another way to build a flagpole, I don't need anyone. I stand alone. This is creeping back into our society. Isolationism is creeping back in, especially in this digital society. And yet we all understand that we are more powerful together. If we wanna build a mountain, we know that together we have stability, protection, and a true sense of belonging. And then finally, if you wanna build a flagpole, you would say keep growing no matter the cost. And that has gotten a lot of businesses in trouble. It's a very, very scary way of approaching things. I suggest that in order to build a mountain, we understand that sustainable growth is what will stand the test of time. So I really suggest that we take this into our minds and hearts and we think about this in all facets of our lives. And then finally, number three, keep remembering that we are all in this together. It's really easy to forget. So in 2005, there was a great novelist, David Foster Wallace, who gave a speech at Kenyon College and he told this story. He said there were these two little fish and they're swimming along in the water and they come across an older fish and the older fish says, morning boys, how's the water? And the fish kind of swim on and they get over here and they say, what the hell is water? <laughs> it's easy to forget what is so real and what is so obvious. It is easy to forget that we are all swimming in the same water. It is easy to forget that Margot and Sally are interconnected. 
And it's easy to forget that the finance room and the workforce room depend on each other. But this is what we must do. We must remind ourselves every day that we are interconnected. And I'll bring you back to the story of Brahma and the world that he created. The story ends with, we have to find ourselves. As we find those connections between others, that is when we will be at our most powerful. That is when we can achieve the success that we really crave from inside. And as we, as commercial real estate communicators, practice two-way communication, as we really focus on building mountains and not flagpoles, and as we remember this every day, we will be able to work together to build an American dream that we are so proud to leave to the next generation and those beyond. Thank you.